so it wasn't until the conquistadors came when uh, the Europeans started to understand that this uh, was a very valuable uh, fruit. They call it grano de oro. A uh, rarity of the cacao was probably a big reason for the uh, valuation at the time. And much of the cacao was being actually uh, grown and harvested in the rainforest in the Amazon in South America and then uh, shipped in long dugout canoes up the coast right in front of Costa Rica, right in front of uh, Coclis and Manzanillo. And all. When uh, Cortez comes into central Mexico, has this encounter with the Aztecs. Uh, Montezuma, the reigning emperor, wants to show his uh, wealth and his power, and so he meets the conquistadors and brings them the uh, uh, drink called cacao huatalao. Because the Spanish might have heard caca huatalao, so they changed it to mm. actually uh, chocolate. And uh, so in almost every language, uh, there's some uh, sound when you talk about chocolate. It sounds pretty similar to uh, chocolate or chocolate or chocolada, mm -hmm. chocolate, all these kinds of uh, different uh, languages. You're from Slovakia and Slovakia. it's chocolada. Chocolada. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have uh, quite a lot of uh, influence in modern day culture that really comes from Aztec, Mayan. Uh, roots. Uh, it was also used uh, symbolically or in a shamanistic method of uh, scaring away evil spirits. So if the Spanish were uh, purely like evil spirits, uh, Montezuma would have expected that just this chocolate drink would have scared them away. Uh. Right? Huh. Uh, unfortunately they weren't uh, just <laughs> evil spirits, they were humans with probably evil intent. <laughs> Uh, eventually, the Spanish realized this is a very wealthy individual because he serves it in a solid gold uh, container and all of the tableware, everything mm -hmm. is made out of pure gold. So <laughs> the Spanish uh, begin to calculate his wealth and eventually uh, overthrow him, assassinate him, and raid his storehouses. But what they found was uh, Montezuma was not calculating his wealth in the same way. In fact, he had billions of uh, stored cocoa beans, the fruit from, uh, the seeds from this uh, fruit pod. So, see this kind of clash of monetary values and systems. And it all starts with that fruit. Uh, the uh, pod uh, can be opened uh, pretty much always. It's got to be by hand. Uh, there aren't uh, machines that can uh, separate the beans from the mm. seed pod. Uh, automatically. So it means that uh, industrial world cacao market uh, has got a very high labor uh, cost to it. Uh, but in 1976 there was a major change in the market where uh, West African cacao plantations began to uh, be uh, much much more uh, productive and uh, there was a disease that uh, ravaged the cacao in Central America called Manilia. And it was a mold, it would attach itself to the fruit. I'm sure we'll see some. What you get is this very, very dense uh, kind of jungle uh, with usually very little uh, canopy up above. But uh, Trinitario really is the, uh, uh, any hybrid that has uh, genetic information from uh, Criollo or Forestero. But really, almost all cacao in the world is, uh, would be classified as uh, Trinitario at this point. Very, very few uh, percentage of cacao in the world is pure, pure Criollo, down to probably about 0.3% of the world population. We'll go Bernard Cabo, Bernard whatever. Yeah, so Criollo is also a term you'll start to see probably on some chocolates. There's uh, a lot of uh, open uh, use of that word and it hasn't been uh, necessarily determined as something that can be certified. Uh, you don't uh -huh. have to certify. I can put Criollo on anything I want. And uh, so as chocolate consumers, 
you need to begin to understand what buying flavor is in chocolate versus uh, something that's being sold to at a high mm -hmm. price that doesn't have fine flavor, right? So chocolate is becoming... How would you find that out? By learning how to taste. Yeah. And really finding chocolate uh, characteristics uh, that are from the cacao that you like, right? So if you like it, then it's worth eating. <laughs> we start with uh, a, a managed tree here now so you see there's no vines growing up and down it we don't have any termites nests in it the uh, sucker branches have been uh, cleaned and trimmed away so that it's easier to access the tree if we look at the forest floor we'll start seeing creatures right away i have a poison dart frog right here going up the side of the tree mm, oh yeah poison dart frog uh, the forest floor the in a mm -hmm. cacao forest is alive with uh, many, many different creatures, amphibians, reptiles, small mammals, insects, of course, uh, a lot of uh, microorganisms at work in here. And all of that, uh, just on the forest floor, is a whole ecosystem, right? And if I wanted to be uh, certified, and check out that bumblebee, <laughs> pretty cool, it's a big one. I could, uh, if I wanted to uh, reduce the uh, shade, which would help me uh, produce healthier fruit, but it would also uh, destroy habitat that's living and using this canopy. So mm -hmm. by, based on our uh, higher standard, uh, we're not going to do any uh, deforestation in order to uh, get higher production of cacao. Uh, if I uh, were to, uh, like many cacao farmers here, uh, harvest my fruit uh, and then remove the seeds and then sell the wet seed product to someone else who's going to, who knows how to uh, process that into uh, a sellable or exportable cacao. I can get, at a very fair trade price, even organic certified, about three cents per fruit. That would be wow. per, fruit. per fruit. The whole so fruit. this is like a very, very good price for uh, this a per fruit thing. But uh, we found that if we uh, can uh, go through this uh, uh, value added steps and turn this into fine flavor cacao, and then also turn it into a uh, artisan gourmet chocolate, we can get up to $3. So any other uh, uh, trees, unless it's an important uh, uh, food source for animals or a uh, fruit tree or something like that, uh, is being uh, uh, removed uh, by machete. So, uh, and we were concerned that that was, uh, in a way, going to affect the habitat, but uh, we've actually seen the opposite uh, is the case. Because as the cacao is becoming healthy, there's more sustenance for the small mammals, which means there's more uh, prey for predators. Uh, mold infection and uh, any fruit that's been consumed or opened by an animal, all of this is to uh, basically use the principle of like cheese. Uh, where you see a little bit of mold on your cheese uh, and you cut it off instead of throwing the whole cheese away. So the idea is since there's some mold, uh, with frequent inspections we control the spread of the mold. Sort of found ourselves in a uh, very exclusive group, probably less than a handful of uh, uh, chocolate companies who make uh, cacao on the, uh, uh, turn cacao into chocolate right on the same estate where the chocolate is growing and in some ways the uh, specialty chocolate market has had to create terms for us and they don't know what to call us. So we're uh, a single estate craft chocolate company okay and that means that uh, the chocolate's made at origin right on the estate. Uh, it would be just like the first person in Napa Valley to uh, start producing uh, wine from their grapes in, their, in that area. In order to uh, harvest the fruit, we have to uh, pick the ripe fruit and only the ripe fruit from all of the trees on the uh, forest. 
requires uh, a lot of work, uh, climbing and hiking up and down these uh, muddy, oftentimes slippery slopes uh, with sharp tools and utensils, so it's not uh, safe, it's not something that we can just have a volunteer come here and do, it's uh, something that you need skill. Uh, labor. Once we harvest the fruit, we have something that's worth you know, a few cents each fruit, but we're going to uh, apply uh, ancient techniques to turn this into uh, gourmet uh, cacao. As the mango wok, uh, the term wok was a term used by uh, Afro-Caribbean or Jamaican immigrants to talk about a farm. Uh, I think farming for them was like a walking about and you walk and you pick what you need for the day. And uh, So Mango Walk was a name uh, because of all the mango trees here. You can see the mangoes growing right there.